<clears throat> How much Coca-Cola do you think gets sold around the world every day? It's got to be at least 10,000, 100,000, maybe even a million products sold every single day. Coca-Cola is one of the biggest and most popular brands out there, so it only makes sense that there would be a consistently high demand for its products. The company has a very well-established supply line in order to meet the demands of its consumers. If you were to go to any store or gas station, I would be surprised if you didn't find Coke products lining its shelves. The Coca-Cola company is an American multinational beverage company with its headquarters located in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the first company that conducted operation in the soft drink industry, and it is the world's largest non-alcoholic beverage company serving more than 1.8 billion consumers daily in more than 200 companies. It has a portfolio of more than 3,500 products. However, the company is best known for its flagship product, Coca-Cola, which was originally intended to be a patented medicine invented by pharmacist John Stiff Pemberton in 1886 in Columbus, Georgia. The Coca-Cola products can be termed as normal goods, that is, goods whose demand increases as consumer income increases. And in August 2019, Coca-Cola introduced a new product into the market, i.e. zero sugar, where the demand has increased for the product in the market. If you take a look at this graph, you can see that the demand curve of Coca-Cola is that of any other normal good and the demand curve is downward, sloping from the left to the right uh, over a given time period. This relationship can be explained by the law of demand, which states that as a uh, price of the good increases, the quantity demanded of that good falls, and as the price of the good decreases, the quantity demanded of it rises. Therefore, the lower the price of Coke, the more a consumer is likely to buy. Hence, it can be concluded that the price is a major determinant of demand, and the effect of a change in price is illustrated by movement along the demand curve and is referred to as a change in quantity demanded. Moving on, we have the um, supply curve of Coca-Cola, and like its demand curve counterpart, we can see that the supply curve is also that of a normal good, which slopes upward from left to right. And it shows the relationship between the price of Coke and the quantity of Coke supplied over a given period of time. And the effect of a change in price is illustrated by movement along the supply curve, which is often referred to as a change in quantity demanded. Moving on again, we have the equilibrium curve points, which is the quantity demanded curve and the quantity supply curve smushed together, basically. And uh, the equilibrium is the point at which a particular price, both quantity demanded, is equal to quantity supplied. So in this specific graph, we can see that at a price of $1.50, both quantity demanded and quantity supplied are at a, equal at a 1000 And however, price is not the only factor that determines how much of a good people will buy. There are many other factors that affect demand and any change in other determinants other than price can cause a change in demand and a shift in the demand curve, uh, such as income. If there is an increase in the income of the consumer, there will be an increase in the demand of Coca-Cola, which in turn results in the rightward shift of the demand curve and vice versa. So if you, the price, if a uh, consumer income went down, the demand of Coke would go down as well and shift to the left. There's also things like the price of substitutes. If there was an increase in the price of substitute like Pepsi or Dr. Pepper, there would be an increase in the demand for Coca-Cola, which would also result in the rightward shift of the demand curve. But that also works both ways. If Pepsi was cheaper, then there would be less of a demand for Coca-Cola, and that would be a leftward shift. Uh, there's also price of complementary. So if there's an increase in the price of complementary goods like KFC or Chick-fil-A, there will be a decrease in the demand of Coca-Cola, 
which in turn leads to the leftward shift of the demand curve. Uh, taste and preferences also affect the demand curve. Uh, in recent past, there has been a product introduced with the name Zero Sugar, which has tend to increase the demand of Coca-Cola. And if we look at this graph right here, we can see exactly what I'm referring to whenever I say uh, as the you know as things change, you know, uh, price go, the price of the income of consumers goes up. I'm sorry we can see that the demand curve would shift to that rightward one versus if it went down, it, we could see it shift to the leftward one. Um, <clears throat> we also have the same for supply. It's not only determined by price. There are other factors that influence the supply of a product, which causing a shift in the supply curve and leading to a change in supply, uh, like cost of production. If there's an increase of things like flavoring and sugar, caffeine, we will be able to see an increase in the cost of production of the product, and the supplier will tend to produce less of the product, which leads to a leftward shift of the supply curve. So it would be able to go from that uh, middle S1 curve to the S3. However, there's also things like uh, improvements of technology and techniques of production used by Coca-Cola, that would lead to decreases in the cost of production and then the supplier would be more willing to supply more product and there would be a rightward shift in the supply curve going from S1 to S2. Uh, there's also the number of consumers which affects the uh, supply amount. Coca-Cola has a large number of consumers and high level of brand loyalty as a result, suppliers are, would be more willing to supply to cater to the needs of its customers. However, if a new product like um, a new product that would rival Coke and Pepsi were to enter the market that consumers preferred more, we would definitely see a decrease in supply of Coca-Cola and it would go from S1 to S3. However, on the other end of that, if we see a competitive company like Pepsi pull out of the quote-unquote um, uh, soft drink industry, then there would be a much higher demand for uh, Coca-Cola, and it would move from the S1 to S2.